the limitless woman. Is it true that all corporations are conspiring not to pay women what is equal to a man? A statement, you have not because you ask not, and a request. If you are guilty as a man or a woman of telling your daughters, your sisters, your girlfriends, your wives, or any other important woman in your life that their behavior is not ladylike, that little girls should be seen and not heard, I want you to stop. I am always about empowering women to ask and to provide them with the tools to promote a new stereotype of the limitless woman. As a coach, you guys know, I get people unstuck all the time and I've been doing it for over 10 years. I want every woman to take control of their careers and take control of their business. I encourage women to unapologetically ask for what they want and then more importantly, expect to get it. It is absolutely my hope that you can make a difference in the life of someone that you love, care for, respect, or are responsible for. And because there are so many of us that grew up in homes where things were said to us, sometimes we don't even re realize that we are saying these same things that we heard that serve to diminish us, to make us feel a sense of lack, that serve to make us feel less than self-confident. We don't even realize sometimes that we're saying those things to other people. Every day in the news, we hear something about equal pay for equal work. And that's only fair. But I don't believe that in this rush to judgment that all the corporations in America are conspiring to pay women less money than they are paying men. Are there some bad actors? Yeah, of course there are. But it's not really fair to paint, you know, everyone with this broad cloth of everybody is a bad guy. Actually, when I worked at Xerox, my old sales manager, Tom O'Leary, who was amazing, took me under his wing and showed me the ropes. And unfortunately, at that time, I didn't really get it. Like, I didn't really have a clue about what he was trying to groom me for in that corporation. And so it was last year after reading this book called Forget a Mentor, Find a Sponsor, that I actually finally got that this man was my sponsor. And had I understood that and embraced that, I might have ended up the CEO at Xerox. So what then is the problem? Well, I was in an airport bar a few years ago and there was a little segment on and they were talking about why women make less money than men. And the outcome was quite simply that women don't ask, they wait. They wait to be rewarded. They wait for somebody to notice that they're doing a great job and affirm them like Queen Elizabeth tapping them on the head. The effect is that they give up their power of self-determination. Their future is always in someone else's hands waiting to bestow some kind of honor on them and tell them that they're okay instead of them knowing that they're okay and asking for what they deserve. So why don't they ask? Why don't you ask? Because asking isn't polite. Because asking isn't ladylike. Because speaking out and speaking up would get you the side eye from a relative when you were growing up. Because speaking up was often seen as being a know-it-all and asking too many questions or being too smart was not the way to get a man. The message that we got over and over again as women growing up was be safe, dumb yourself down and wait for daddy 
or mommy in some cases to reward you. The problem is that in the real world, whether you're 22, 32, 42, or 52, your boss is not your daddy. Your superior is not gonna reward you with an extra $20,000 a year for cleaning your room, doing the dishes, or taking the dog for a walk. If you want another $20,000 a year, another $10,000 a year, another $300 on a booking, another $1,000 on a booking, you are going to have to ask for it. And asking for it in the real world is about being prepared to talk about how you add value and that you can only get from your clients. In corporate America, it's knowing how you contribute to the bottom line. My really good friend Darla makes over three quarters of a million dollars a year, and she is in a position to hire several people every year. And she and I were having a conversation, and she said, I have never hired a white man who didn't ask for more than what was being offered. And I have never hired a woman who has ever asked for anything more than what was being offered. Did you hear that? She's never hired a white man who didn't ask for more. And she's never hired a woman, black or white, who ever asked for anything more. These are six figure jobs she's handing out. At the beginning of this presentation, I said, if you've been telling the important women in your life that their behavior is not ladylike or that they should be seen and not heard, that you should stop. This is not a man problem. This is not a woman problem. If we want to live in a more equitable society, it is all of our responsibility to pitch in and make it so. My request for all of us would be that we would throw off the old beliefs about what it's like to be ladylike. That we would redefine ladylike as assertive and powerful. That we re would remember that what we know and the way we act was either passed down or passed on. And that the men in our lives and men who are in charge of other women would stop the cycle of leaving women out by calling on them when they raise their hands and stopping the knee jerk reaction to your own fears by telling someone you can't do that. If you as a woman or you as a man recognize that there is a woman in your life or in your organization who isn't living up to her potential, help her, pull her aside, ask her why she isn't going for more, offer to help, be a mentor, be a friend, or be a sponsor. And finally, for us women, everybody's not out to get us. If you're in a job, there's a reason upward mobility is presented graphically as a ladder. Get on it and keep moving. As Sheryl Sandberg would say, and she did in her book, Lean In, Women Work and the Will to Lead. Lean in and ask for what you want. Nobody is giving you anything that you don't ask for. Speak up. Examine your own self-talk and the way you talk to the other girls and the other women around you. It will make all of us stronger.